Right, back to the father. Why not the mother? Why is God male? Do you really think that is the way we define it? That he is so masculine that... Well, it just seems a bit odd because he's... He, God is spirit, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, just checking myself. And spirit is male? <laughs> well, part of or is the... it all defined on Jesus? Uh, part of the difficulty we have is that we have to go with the revelation that God has given. Yeah, of course. So a God has chosen to reveal himself in this way... And so we have to accept that. Now, why God has chosen to reveal himself in a way that leaves us all applying all these masculine characteristics to him Mm. as if that's the only understanding of God that is acceptable, I think is just part of God's graciousness because he's revealing himself in a way that he wants to be known, but that's still open to misinterpretation. So I think that there's a real sense in which what we do very often is we take God's revelation where he's been pleased to use the male pronoun and see himself in that particular way in presenting himself to us like that. And then we take that and then we we apply a whole load of masculinity to it and it suddenly becomes a macho revelation in a way that I'm not sure God wants to bring. Have we done that or is that in scripture? I think it's a mixture. I think in Scripture we see the way that God wants to reveal himself. Yeah. And if we could come with that kind of understanding. But then when we're reading it, we do still tend to read it through our own cultural lens. And so we end up very often, I think, placing a whole lot of greater sort of masculine impression upon God than actually but even if is we look justified. At, if we look at the, um, the first man, um, you, know, you know, looking at... I know there's the argument of Genesis 1 being poetical or being um, exactly the narrative of what happened, but we we get this story about Adam being the first man, and that's after God says, let us make man in our own image. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know man is for mankind, and Adam means mankind, but the first creation out of his image is that of a man. And then when we see the second Adam, which is Jesus, it is again a man. Is, th- is that him just making sure that we know that he's like, I'm a dude, bros. <laughs> or not bros, sons. Uh, I don't know why he's from California. I just No, kind of, I know. Uh, I just wonder where the accent came from. Well, you know, I think God's often this big booming voice. I like to think of him as a surfer dude. Okay. Not really. I just, <laughs> <laughs> just, where did you get that one from? <laughs> so, oh, there's so dude. many waters, you know, hovering over the water, you know, a little... Okay. Da, 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 da. Anyway, uh, yeah. Answer I, me. Sometimes you take me places I never expected I'm to sorry. go. Spirit of God on a surfboard. I never expected. It really to be changes there. things. Yes, I mean, it, it would yeah. make, make a great movie. You know, big wave at the end. There we go. So coming back yeah. to the question. Well done. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> when God created in the first instance, mm-hmm. He is creating male and female. All right. Yeah, okay, you come into chapter 2, you see the man was created first and the woman was taken out from man. God's trying to teach us lessons in that, which is lessons of relationship and respect and all of those kind of things. I think, obviously, there is going to be a a revelation where Christ takes on humanity. Mm -hmm. That's agreed from the beginning. In, In the Garden of Eden, it's talking about the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent's head. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, obviously, we're going to have an incarnation because go back beyond that Jesus is the lamb that's slain from the foundation of the world so yeah. there within the Godhead there's the agreement and then you come to the moment where God says this is going to be expressed and there's going to be a seed of a woman that's going to bruise the serpent's head so well it has know, to be the seed of a woman because the man doesn't give birth absolutely I mean, that's not yeah yeah Fair enough. I'm just, but what I'm I just th- like, I thought, yeah, no, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But what, what we're saying at that particular point is, is God is going to take on flesh, mm-hmm. okay, somehow. Yeah, yeah. And you have a, then the question is, so why did he take on male flesh? Yeah. But then that's part of God's desire to present himself in, in that particular way. But, but you then get into this, this sort of ultra macho Jesus as well that some people present. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I know. But, but 
we don't we don't have a, a, a third option. God can't come as something other than male or female. He has to come as one or the other. Yeah. So he takes on well, male flesh. But but there's a whole load of uh, ways in which we start applying that that mm-hmm. then put pressure on this. But God's heart is to reveal Himself to us, and we need to look much more at the personality of Jesus, the character of Jesus rather than push the masculinity of Jesus. Thanks for watching. If you want to listen to the full episode, head over to podcasts on iTunes or click the link in the comments.